We see Helene moving into Georgia near Valdosta right along the state line. It is going to be a different storm than what it will be as it makes it up here in the North Georgia. And what this graphic shows you is the wind field of the storm. This is an incredibly large storm and you notice in this yellow color. Those are the tropical storm force winds which extend outward from the center several hundred miles across. So it covers more than the entire Florida Peninsula and you'll see as this storm makes it into Georgia. The wind field will cover from east to west the entire state of Georgia as well. Let's push that wind field timeline out as we get into midnight tonight. Helene's moving inland and at that point the core of the winds are over Valdosta. But meanwhile up in North Georgia, we're just starting to see those tropical storm force gusts arriving. So as Chris and I have been showing you all evening, the timeline for us to see those strongest winds don't move in until after midnight tonight, really after two, three in the morning. It's going to be those peak of the wind gusts. You notice in the orange color, these are the higher end tropical storm force winds. And in this red color, those are the hurricane force winds. Let's push the timeline further out. We're going to pause at six o'clock tomorrow morning. Now at this point, Helene's going to be weakening from a hurricane to a strong tropical storm. So you'll see this red color going away here as we push it forward in the track, but it's the south side of Atlanta, the areas in that hurricane warning and the areas right on the right side of where Helene ends up going, that's going to be where we see the strongest side, the strongest winds with the system. That's what we call the dirty side of the storm, more in the way of rain, wind, more in the way of rain and the inland tornado threat. The yellow box, though, the yellow polygon, still those tropical storm force gusts are covering up almost the entire east west span of Georgia through South Carolina. So big picture, a lot of winds coming in, a lot of wind damage potential, and that's why we expect power outages to be significant here across the state. This power outage risk map shows you in this burnt red color, kind of like colors of fall foliage. This is where the most widespread power outages are going to be. They will extend into parts of Metro Atlanta. We will have areas in the 11 Alive viewing area that have widespread power outages that do go on probably for days. So we think the worst of the wind damage is going to be kind of the south and the southeastern side of the Metro all the way over to Athens, down to Macon, Upson County, Spalding, uh, and also Griffin area. And then we will still see significant power outages in areas north of that. We just don't feel that it'll be quite as widespread as it is to the south. Everybody's going to be impacted. Everybody will be impacted. So recapping rainfall additional three to six inches is likely wind gusts will be increasing. And as Chris mentioned earlier, because Helene has gotten stronger, the winds as it makes it into our area are also going to be stronger than we previously thought they would be. That's because it's a stronger hurricane as our starting point. So it's going to take it a little further north before those winds come down more. So wind gusts now we think for the metro 50 to 70 miles per hour in areas in the hurricane warning, those wind gusts could pass over 80 miles per hour. The highest winds for us will be between about three o'clock in the morning and nine or 10 in the morning, depending on where you are across the state. Tornado risk. We'll also watch that overnight. That's going to be especially east of our area. I think it's a bigger threat for Augusta, Macon, Savannah area, Statesboro, but that's also something we'll be watching as the center of Helene moves through. Now I want to talk about these winds a little bit more in detail. We have these strong winds coming in. They're going to last for several hours, but what is going to make us so susceptible to power outages overnight is because we have a lot of rain in advance of those strong winds. When we don't have rain and we just have a really dry ground like we had five days ago, right? We introduce a 40 mile per hour wind gust. Well, those trees, they're going to sway in those strong winds, but they're not going to fall as easily. The dry ground keeps the root systems in place, but when we introduce a lot of rain on top of it, that ground is not rock solid, right? It's muddy, it's smushy and the roots for the trees, right? Those can give way a lot easier when you bring in a strong wind gust. So we bring in the wind gust and the trees are not just snapping in half. They're coming up by the root system. So the wet ground loosens the roots and makes them more susceptible to those strong wind gusts coming in. Let's go hour by hour with these wind gusts as we go through the next couple of hours this evening. It's going to be breezy. 
but the strongest winds are yet to come. So if you are still having to run a couple of errands, you got to buy a couple last minute groceries at the grocery store or something like that. There's a lot of rain you're going to encounter on the roads and it's going to be breezy. But those winds between now and midnight should mostly stay below 30 mile per hour gusts. Look how they increase though. Pretty significantly increase as we get past midnight as we push towards 3:30 in the morning, starting to see some of those gusts above 40. We'll go out to 6:30 in the morning. We start to see gusts area wide 40, 50, even some 60. You see in Thomaston there, it's showing 67 and through early tomorrow morning, we'll see the height of those wind gusts and then they will start to calm down as we work our way into the afternoon. Still breezy tomorrow afternoon, just not quite as windy as where they were first thing in the morning. So three o'clock in the morning to nine o'clock. That's when we're expecting the winds to be at their worst. And then from there we will see the winds just being breezy tomorrow afternoon. All right, a lot of rain that we've been talking about, a lot more rain to come. It's been this steady kind of, I keep calling it conveyor belt because it really is. You go to the grocery store, you put your, you know, your items on the, the belt and it goes down the line. Well, <laughs> this is rain and we've put it on the conveyor belt and it's all going across the same path south to north. So rain keeps pushing into North Georgia. There are pockets where the rain is heavier than others, but everybody's getting the rain. In particular, right now, there is a flash flood warning where we're also seeing heavy rain coming down right along Georgia 400, Roswell, Alpharetta, down to Doraville and down into Norcross area as well. We're seeing some locally heavy rain also on the southeastern side of town. This is really the same areas that we've been watching over the last hour get the heavy rainfall. McDonough, heavy rain there. Downtown connector. We've got, I mean, it's steady rain. The heaviest, though, is east of the downtown connector, up Buford Highway, up 85, and down into DeKalb County as well. 